Well, welcome to a News of the Day edition of Stars, Cells, and God, uh, where we share with you the latest published material that's giving us new evidences that are pertaining to the science faith issues and Christianity in particular. And I got with, I'm, I'm Hugh Ross, incidentally. I'm the founder of Reasons to Believe. I'm an astrophysicist, and uh, I've been looking at the uh, la latest literature. And this preprint uh, just got posted, um, and I read the paper. Uh, even though it hasn't yet gone through the peer review process, having read it, I don't think there's going to be much in the way of changes. It's uh, written by 44 astronomers, an international team of astronomers, and it's basically, here's the paper, and it's reporting on the latest results uh, from the uh, Trans-Neptunian Object Survey, the New Horizons Subaru Survey. And uh, there's a spacecraft that's gone past Pluto, the New Horizons spacecraft, and uh, it was adjusted as it passed Pluto to begin to explore some of the objects in the Kuiper belt. That's a belt of comets. Uh, just beyond the orbit of uh, Neptune and uh, Pluto. And, uh, that, and, that, and then they're, now they're combining that with uh, observations with the Subaru telescope. The Subaru telescope is Jap it's Japan's largest telescope. It's located on the island of Hawaii. Uh, it's the second biggest telescope on the island of Hawaii, uh, just a little bit smaller than the Keck telescope. And so it's been dedicated, uh, part of its time has been dedicated to do some follow-up observations on what's being discovered uh, by the New Horizons spacecraft. And in particular, what they do is they take images in the region of the spacecraft, uh, and then they basically take them day after day after day, and they're looking for movement, uh, movement relative to the background stars. And when they see that, then they know that they've detected an asteroid or a comet, and they're able to do measurements to determine where it is. And so this is the latest paper about what they've been able to discover with that survey. And this paper reports on the discovery of 294 uh, objects that are beyond the orbit of uh, Neptune. And uh, what it's revealing is that it looks like our solar system has six asteroid and comet belts rather than five. And this slide here basically shows you the five different asteroid and comet belts that uh, orbit about our sun. You got the main belt. That's a belt of asteroids between the orbit of Mars and uh, Jupiter. Almost all of them uh, more than halfway out from uh, Mars uh, to Jupiter. Uh, and those were the first asteroids to, to be discovered. That's why it's called the main belt. But ironically, it's the smallest of the five asteroid belts that orbit about our sun. So uh, between Jupiter and Neptune, we have what's referred to as the centaurs. And then uh, from 2 to 20 billion miles away from the sun, we have the scattered belt. And the scattered belt has an appropriate name because these are asteroids and comets that have been scattered away from the four main comet and asteroid belts. So you get the main belt, the centaurs, the Kuiper belt, which is what the Subaru telescope's been investigating. Uh, these are objects that are beyond the orbit of Neptune and Pluto, basically orbiting four to six billion miles uh, away uh, from the sun. Uh, it's the second biggest of the asteroid and comet belts in our solar system, by far the largest asteroid and comet belt is what's referred to as the Oort cloud. And these are asteroids and comets that are orbiting 10 billion to 2 trillion miles away from uh, the sun. And, uh, but now uh, this paper is reporting what they think is a discovery of a sixth asteroid and comet belt. And what they're able to discern uh, with their observations is they now have a better definition of the Kuiper belt uh, namely, that it seems to be composed of tens of thousands of objects that are orbiting at 35 to 55 times the orbit of Earth from the Sun, uh, what's referred to as an astronomical unit. Uh, and then they discovered that there's a gap uh, from 55 to 70 times uh, Earth's orbit from the Sun. There seems to be a gap where very few asteroids and comets are orbiting. 
And then beyond that, and this is what the paper's all about, uh, they discovered another asteroid in Comet Belt, basically 70 uh, to, well, uh, 70 to 90 times uh, the distance, uh, the sun's orbit about the sun. So the Kuiper Belt, uh, we have a 35 to 55 astronomical units. There's a gap from 55 to 70. Then 70 to 90, we're seeing a newly discovered comet and asteroid belt. Now, the 44 astronomers are cautious in what they conclude. They say, well, we think we've got strong evidence that we've now found a distinct uh, comet and asteroid belt to complement the five that are already known to exist. But of course, they're calling for follow-up observations to actually uh, affirm what they've discovered and to better define this new asteroid and comet belt. Now, <clears throat> what I've written about in my book, Designed to the Core, is that our sun has asteroids and comets, uh, belt, asteroid and comet belts that we see in no other stellar system. Astronomers now have the power to discover asteroid and comet belts orbiting other stars. And what we've discovered is about 80% of them have no asteroids and comets at all, or none that we can actually see. 20% have asteroid and comet belts that are at least a thousand times bigger than the asteroid and comet belts uh, in our solar system. So 80%, no asteroids and comets. 20% uh, asteroids and comets that are a thousand times more numerous than the ones we have in our solar system. And this is what alerted astronomers, there's something special that we've been overlooking about the solar system. And uh, what they have discovered is uh, what's unique about our solar system is the way its gas giant planets have migrated in the early history of the solar system. And astronomers, in discovering more than 7,000 planets outside of our solar system, recognize that planet migration is a common feature and planetary systems. Namely, that the big gas giant planets and the Neptune-type planets, uh, they will typically migrate inwards uh, towards their star. A few migrate outwards, but the vast majority migrate inwards. And it's this inward migration uh, that causes the asteroids and comets in the planetary system to be scattered out of the system. So it explains why 80% of them we can't detect any asteroids or comets. And it's because of this inward movement of the gas giant planets and the Neptune-type planets. Uh, and then the 20% are explained by the fact that about a fifth of planetary systems, the gas giant and Neptune-type planets do not migrate inward or they migrate outward. And uh, therefore, uh, they leave the asteroids and comets uh, virtually uh, untouched. What's unique about our solar system is that we have Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune, and Uranus, and a fifth uh, planet that's about almost the mass of uh, Neptune. Uh, they uh, migrate inward. Uh, Jupiter and Saturn migrate a lot faster than Neptune and Uranus and the fifth gas giant planet. Uh, but what's special is uh, in that inward migration, a 2-3 resonance is set up, uh, which means that Saturn makes exactly two orbits around the Sun for every three orbits of Jupiter. And that sets up a resonance that stops the inward migration of Jupiter and Saturn and causes them to reverse their migration and end up virtually where they started. And what this does is that it eradicates about 99.9% of the asteroids and comets, but leaves a tenth of a percent intact. So it explains why our solar system has these five small asteroid and comet belts. And now, thanks to this discovery, it's looking like it has six small asteroid and comet belts. And it's through the study of these asteroid and comet belts that astronomers have been able to determine precisely the migration of the big planets inwards towards the sun, stopping and then reversing their migration. Uh, the second slide here actually shows you the history of the migration of Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. 
And by carefully studying uh, that, these five asteroid and comet belts, they've been able to accurately determine the inward and outward migration, and then develop models where they calculated the consequences of that inward and outward migration on the formation of the rocky planets in our solar system. Basically predicting that our solar system started off with five rocky planets, two of them, the proto-Earth and Theia, uh, collided with one another and merged to form a bigger planet Earth. And also that merger resulted in the formation of the moon, how the formation of the moon helped stabilize the orbital configurations of the, all uh, eight planets in the solar system, and particularly explains what's referred to as the small Mars problem. Because in planetary formation, you would anticipate that the farther a rocky planet is from its host star, the more massive it will be. And we see that that formula works well for Mercury, Venus, and Earth. It doesn't work for Mars. Uh, Mars is one-ninth the mass of the Earth. It should be twice the mass of the Earth. Uh, but it's thanks to these five asteroid and comet belts that we've been able to solve what's referred to as a small Mars problem, basically showing that this inward and outward migration of Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, and a fifth uh, icy planet explains why Mars' mass uh, remained uh, so tiny it didn't grow to be twice the mass of the Earth. If it actually became as massive as the Earth or more massive than the Earth, that would have eliminated the possibility of advanced life on Earth. Well, the significance of this discovery of the sixth uh, comet and asteroid belt, it's going to enable astronomers to come up with a much more detailed model of the inward and outward migration of the five big planets in our solar system actually help us to determine what happened to the smallest of those uh, ice gas giant planets. Uh, the model we now have tells us that one of two things happened. That fifth planet uh, either got ejected completely from the solar system or got ejected out to about 50 times the orbital distance of Neptune. And there's efforts underway to discover it. But thanks to the discovery of the six uh, comet belt, asteroid belt, it'll be possible for astronomers to come up with a much more detailed model of the inward and outward migration of the planets in our solar system. And this should enable us to determine exactly what happened uh, to that fifth uh, planet. Uh, one that's a little bit smaller than the mass of Neptune. It's also going to enable us to fine-tune uh, what happened to the five rocky planets in our solar system. Bottom line, what we've noticed is the more detail we get on the asteroid and comet belts in our solar system, the more evidence we uncover uh, for the design of the entire solar system that makes possible the existence of a long history of life on planet Earth, and in particular, uh, the appearance of human beings. And so uh, this is what I wrote about and designed to the core, uh, chapters basically outlining why it's possible for human beings to exist on planet Earth in a narrow window of time in which we exist right now. Uh, I would anticipate that as we learn more about the six asteroid and comet belt, that evidence for supernatural, super intelligent design of our solar system that makes our existence possible in a narrow time window, is it going to be significantly enhanced? We'll keep you up to date as uh, more news comes out about the six uh, asteroid and comet belt. Uh, you'll hear from me again here on News of the Day. Uh, this will be posted on YouTube. Uh, so if you're not already a subscriber to the Reasons to Believe YouTube channel, I encourage you to do that. Uh, literally on a weekly basis, uh, we're posting uh, video clips, some long, some short, all quite interesting. We actually look at your comments and respond to your comments. So do take advantage of that. And please tell your friends about the Reasons to Believe uh, YouTube channel. Thank you.